So Demon Slayer is back with a bang with its first episode of the Swordsmith Village and today we're here to break down the episode and compare it to its manga counterpart. Which means if you haven't seen the latest episode of Demon Slayer, the Swordsmith Village, then there are major spoilers here. Don't worry though, I'll only be covering what's been shown in the episode and will omit any future events. So let's get right to it. Demon Slayer, the Swordsmith Village episode 1 used 4 chapters to cover its runtime. This would be chapters 98 to 101. In all, that would roughly be about 78 pages with 333 panels. So let's see what's been adapted or what's been sent on a new adventure. Coming off the heels of the Entertainment District, after the epic defeat of the Upper Moon Six's brother and sister duo, Daki and Gyutaro, we saw where Akaza was summoned to the Infinity Castle. This scene mirrors that of Season 1's Episode 26, when Muzan had summoned the Lower Moons after the death of Rui to dispatch them. All except for Enmu, who was later killed on the Mugen train. Anyways, this is Chapter 98 and it's titled Upper Moon Gathering. The anime would give us a wild scene of Akaza zipping through the areas of the Infinity Castle, but at the same time showing us a snapshot of certain areas. Manga readers such as myself would recognize these areas, but like I said, I won't be spoiling anything for the anime onlys. Man, UFO Table went really hard on this scene. Akaza then notices the Biwa Demon. This is where the episode would actually start. He does realize that there are two other demons here, Upper Moon 5 Gyoko, who laments how long it's been since they last saw each other, and then Upper Moon 4 Han Tengu, who corrects Gyoko saying that it's been 113 years since they last saw each other, since they all were summoned together that is. Then Akaza wonders if it's really Upper Moon 1 that's been killed. And this would be a damper on his fun as he really wants to fight him. But then Upper Moon 2 Doma arrives, hugging him and calling Akaza a friend. While greeting the other demons and not recognizing or rather not caring that Akaza hates this buddy buddy shit. He then gets his face bashed off. But not phased by this, he praises Akaza's punch. This would be where the Biwa demon says that Upper Moon 1 Kokushibo was the first to arrive and just chilling. And this is where he also announces Muzan's arrival. We get some more anime exclusive shots introducing Muzan in an epic way, showing us the unique shots of him just casually running some experiments. Funny enough, this looks a bit further than he was portrayed in the manga, that is the distance between him and the upper ranks. One thing that I haven't highlighted though is the presence of specific demon motifs like that of Akaza and Doma, but also the blaring of the demon slayer motif mixed with the Mugen train motif really sets the stage. This time, Muzan is in his normal adult male form. Last time he was here, we saw that he was a woman, but the last time we had seen him, he was actually a little boy, a true master of disguise. This is where we would also see that he is upside down compared to the rest of the upper moons. And I figured this was one of the special properties of the Infinity Castle, in that it works much like the Penrose Stairs created by Oscar Ruin Trevard in 1937. Just by looking at these examples here, you can see how it would work. This structure has been of hot debate since its inception and has been featured in a myriad of films and media across all genres. But anyways, this is where Muzan lets the upper ranks know that it was Gyutaro that's been killed. Doma offers up his eye in a way to apologize for Gyutaro's shortcomings. But Muzan says that he knew he would lose as Daki would have held him back. But then Doma asks if he has ever failed Muzan. With a cold, back to the head speech, Muzan says he doesn't know why the upper ranks even exist anymore to begin with. And it wasn't apparent in the manga chapter, but in the anime it really shows his frustrations. All while incorporating some anime exclusive shots as per usual. They all feel the gravity of his words, except for Gyoko who interrupts the Demon King to let him know that he has some juicy information that he's gathered. But Muzan wasn't having it. He rips his head off, just like he did to Lower Moon 3 before. And then we get a quick shot of his face which wasn't shown in the manga. But the Upper Moons aren't like the Lower Ones, who had begged for their lives. They just want to be even touched by this revered being. And this is where he demands more suicidal devotion from the upper ranks. One thing that I noticed is that this panel was changed. Instead of just showing his face to the side, we get to see him place his hand over his face, really showing his frustrations with them. He then drops Gyoko's head and tells him to confirm the information with Hantengu before leaving the upper ranks to their own vices. Doma asks Gyoko to go with him or at least tell him the information before Akaza sneaks up from behind and knocks his head clean off, telling him to get lost as Muzan didn't give him any orders. This is where the chapter would end. And to be honest, I would only see about three panels missing from the entire chapter all the way to here, which is very impressive. It means nearly what 99% of this chapter was.
was adapted. I digress. Let's move on. Chapter 99 titled Someone's Dream would start out showing Akaza's hand slashed off by Upper Moon 1, Kokushibo. Seems Akaza went too far. Though Doma doesn't mind, Kokushibo hates that he doesn't respect the hierarchy. We get a quick anime exclusive shot showing all three of them in frame. Akaza is Upper Moon 3 and how dare he attack Upper Moon 2 with such callous. Doma laments that even if Akaza battles for real, he could never beat Upper Moon 1 and 2. He was just having fun but Kokushibo isn't having it. And this is where we'll see the magnificence that is Kokushibo. With his crazy six eyes and even a flame mark reminiscent of Tanjiro's scar during the last moments of his fight with Gyutaro. He lets Akaza off with a warning and then leaves. And this is where Akaza also dips out. Later bitches. While Gyoko asks the Biwa demon to leave him and Antengu in the same place. Leaving Doma all alone with no one to play with. He then asks her to come play with him, but she refuses and leaves as well. We don't get this shot of Doma's face before revealing that he's back to where he belongs. Seems Doma is the leader of some kind of cult or group, but before we get to see that, it cuts to a serene scene of someone being served rice and tea. And I assume that's soup? <laughs> In the manga, it doesn't show the panel of the bird. It just skips right up to a close-up where we see that he is wearing some Hanafuda earrings. We also skip these two panels. But now we get to see that it's Tanjiro that is serving some food and takes his baby from this man. But Tanjiro doesn't have a baby. This is weird, isn't it? Why is the other guy wearing Hanafuda earrings while Tanjiro is older and isn't wearing any Hanafuda earrings? Anyways, I noticed that when he was taking up the cup from the tray, he took the tea first in the manga, while in the anime, he took what I assumed to be soup. They start talking and it seems this guy once saved his family from some tragic event and now is asking for him to tell his story so that he can tell future generations. The anime then shows us their back as they're talking, while in the manga we get two panels of one showing his face and the other showing the side of his face. That's basically one of the only changes I saw within this panel. This is where the anime would show us the bird panel that was skipped earlier. Now this is where we get to see his face and realize that we've seen him before. When Daki was fighting Tanjiro and even way back in the day when Muzan showed his fear. Now the anime does something really nice here. It compresses these three panels in just one scene and we find out that this man isn't Tanjiro but he's named Sumiyoshi. We don't get to see a close-up of his sword within the manga but that's great because I have a video coming out that talks about this blade a bit more. But anyways, they talk a bit before the man gets up and leaves and then this is where we see Tanjiro waking up. It seems this was all a mysterious dream and I bet that will call back a little bit later. Now when he wakes up, Kanao is there looking over him and this is where the chapter would end and the midpoint of the episode. We also get the episode title as well. But this isn't the end of the video. In fact, there is a lot more to come. And how about you share this video with a friend? It really helps the channel. Thank you so much. So let's continue. Chapter 100, titled Now to the Village, begins with the Kakushi Goto, who was the one who introduced us to the Hashira in the first season. Now getting us caught up, letting us know it's been two months since the Entertainment District fight. And he's bringing some food to Tanjiro, hoping he wakes up by smelling the sweet aromas. We do skip this panel showing his full body, and we get an extra scene of the boys being taken in. But this this panel was also changed slightly. He walks in to see Kanao with a smashed face and realizes that Tanjiro is awake. We don't get the panel of him walking to the door, but he does overreact as per usual, blowing up on Kanao for not telling him or anyone else who's been worried about Tanjiro that he's awake. This is where he raises an alarm to everyone to let them know that Tanjiro is awake and the girls from the Butterfly Mansion are all here to say hi. And we get to see what happened to the others as well. Seems Zenitsu is out on a mission, since he woke up a bit earlier than Tanjiro. Tengen is being taken care of by his wives, and this panel was changed slightly to show him walking off while the other two Kakashi were in the back traumatized. We also skip this panel showing Goto once more. But Inosuke had a little trouble in recovering, but now he's fine on the ceiling, being a menace as per usual, and now giving a nice explanation of why he's not normal. We then get these two nice frames of him and Tanjiro staring back at each other. Seems Inosuke has a resistance to poisons, much like a badger, and at the same time he has a resistance to most medicines as well. We get some hijinks of him just being a lovable boarhead wearing demon slayer that we all love and adore. And then Tanjiro passes out. We do get an anime exclusive scene of Lady Tanjiro. Tamayo's cat watching over Tanjiro, and a few days later, Tanjiro is back on his feet. 
we get to hear Aoi narrate over this along with some scenes of her washing some sheets. Now she does let us know that Inosuke headed off on his own mission as well, much like Zenitsu. But in the manga, we didn't get to see the likes of Zenitsu himself and what kind of mission he's on. So the anime gives us some really nice scenes of him being a big baby and breaking the fourth wall. Tanjiro gets some physical training, all the while asking about his sword, only to get a letter from Hananesuka telling him to die. This is where the girls would recommend that Tanjiro head to the village in instead and get a sword directly from there. This would be the midpoint of the episode. And yeah, the girls are eating rice crackers if anyone asks and thank you for asking so politely. They then arrange for the Kakushi to take him to the village. Well, at least part of it, since the village is kept at such a high level of secrecy, even from demon slayers and Kakushi alike. Most of the Kakushi and even the Kasagai crow only know a part of the way and to make sure that it's kept concealed, they blindfold Tanjiro and plug his nose as well as he can use his nose to find where he's going, right? After some scenes of the Kakushi handing him over, we finally arrive at the swordsmith village. There are a few slight changes here, as in when Tanjiro's blindfold came off in the manga, his nose plugs were still there. Also, when we saw when he arrived, he already entered the village, whereas in the anime, he's just at the entrance. This is where we get one of the most anticipated scenes in the entire Demon Slayer log. The love Hashira being all hubba hubba. But there are some changes here as well. You see, in the manga, she was sitting on the rock, but in the anime, she was already in the spring. And this is where the chapter would also end. And come on, leave me a like. I mean, they actually included our scene. So might as well click that like button while you're at it. Chapter 101 titled Secret Talk would begin with a talk. Go figure with Techin Techiko Waraha, the chief of the swordsmith village. Minor detail, but when Tanjiro bowed his head, he didn't have on Nezuko's house. And also in the manga, Techin is holding the bowl of snacks. While in the anime, he isn't. Techin tells Tanjiro that Hotaro has gone missing and they are trying to locate him because he tends to, you know, throw tantrums and vanish for a while. And he's been like that since he was a child. But Tanjiro should rest as he hasn't fully recovered yet. So he should go to the hot springs and enjoy some. That is until his swordsmith is found. On his way to the hot springs, we do get an anime exclusive scene, also seen in the trailers of Tanjiro watching some swordsmiths smith away. <laughs> And oh yeah, he gets to chill with this pretty girl. He sheets her bazonkazonks and she screams and complains that she was ignored by a kid in the springs and tell Tanjiro to go f him up before vanishing to get some food. <laughs> Tanjiro heads up to the spring and we get to meet this young man that's been harassing women since the start of the series. And he is none other than Genya Shinagazawa. Seems he's got a tooth loose and a bad attitude when Tanjiro tries to speak with him, Tanjiro gets drowned. I mean, you don't talk to a man when he's bathing, right? It's just not right, Tanjiro. Now he does leave Tanjiro there to wallow in his own mistakes. And oh yeah, Nezuko is here too. <laughs> but after some time, we now get back to see Mitsuri he has downed like 20 plates of food, like a true G. Tanjiro would tell her that the kid's name is Genya Shinakazawa. And this is where we learn that there is a connection between Genya and Sanami and they are brothers. We definitely see where the bad habits come from now. It runs in the blood. Nezuko and Mitsuri play along with each other for a few moments while Tanjiro worries over Genya not getting any food. So Mitsuri and Tanjiro then decide to go find Genya. This is where Tanjiro would ask Mitsuri why she wanted to become a demon slayer in the first place. And Mitsuri says that she just needs some d I mean, she needs to find a husband. A bit shallow if you ask me, but hey, to each his own. Or her own in this case. Now, while searching for Genya, Mitsuri is called away as her new sword is ready and she needs to check it out before leaving on her own missions. This is where she has a heart to heart with Tanjiro. And Tanjiro says that he promises to take down the demon king Muzan Kibutsuji himself. She does tell Tanjiro that there's a secret weapon in the village to make him stronger and it's her way of coming on to him. But don't worry, she knows that he's a kid. So she only gives him light hints. Poor guy bursts out in nosebleed. In the next morning, or it could be the same day, we see him meditating. And this is where we get some anime exclusive scenes as seen in the trailer. For the next few moments, we also get to see him eating some breakfast and interacting with Nezuko. Also, this scene is not in the manga. So he sets off once he finishes. And I believe that it may be the next day, but it's not really clear to me. Let me know what you think. Now we get back on track with the manga and then end up running into the next Hashira, the Mist Hashira Muichiro Tokito, where 
where he's having a loud discussion with a small kid. This is where the chapter would end. However, the anime would add some additional scenes. There is a guy standing behind the kid and Tanjiro realizes that he's seen this guy before. But then this stirs up some questions. If it was a dream, how could he be standing here right now? Maybe it's someone that looks like him. Who knows, I guess we'll find out in the next episode. This is where the episode would end. Comment below on your theories before the next episode comes out to see what's happening. And this is for anime only. You manga readers, sit tight. I can't believe it's Demon Slayer season again. It's literally been a year since I saw the last Demon Slayer episode and I'm so glad that the studio and animators gave this episode so much love and the details that I would never imagine that they would even do. Now we do see the story coming all together and I can't wait to see the rest of the season. But for now, let's break down this episode and see what's been adapted. Demon Slayer, The Swordsmith Village, episode one covered four manga chapters. I will be omitting the first three minutes of the episode as it shows Akasa realizing that he's in the Infinity Castle as this was a part of the last season of Demon Slayer. Now, each of these chapters would have an average of about 18 pages, all adding up to 78 pages, each page having an average of around 83 panels, all adding up to 333 panels, with 13 of those panels being unique or not adapted, which means only 320 panels were adapted across all four chapters, giving us a 96.10% of everything that was covered. We also got to see a lot of extended scenes and some exclusive shots for the anime as well, which I'm loving and is a great start to the series. If you love what you're seeing, don't forget to subscribe. I will be breaking down every single episode and its manga counterpart, so stay tuned for that as they roll out each week. If you haven't caught up with the previous season, I have an entire playlist showing the comparisons of each episode of the Entertainment District as well. I've been your host, Kyle. Thanks again for joining V Nation. Peace out and stay safe out there. Bye.